You know, yesterday's weather perfect for getting outside, and there are so many more beautiful San Diego late spring and summer days ahead here. So joining us to share how to beautify your backyard and attract maybe some birds and even butterflies to our backyard, our friend Tiger this morning. Tiger, we want to talk about inviting those birds and those butterflies because a lot of us have already gotten the gardens growing for our, our, our food, or we've already picked this up as a hobby, and now we can take it next level here, right? Yeah, this is talking next step. And it's funny, right before I, I came on, there was a commercial for a mosquito company, right? But what better natural way than attract some birds into your yard and they'll eat the mosquitoes, oh, you know, you if you go. have a mosquito problem. <laughs> yeah, the circle of life, that, that's how that all works. Um, so yeah. uh, what are we talking about? What, let's uh, start maybe with, with, with butterflies. Are there certain plants, certain things we can do now to invite them in? Because those monarchs are just so beautiful to see in your backyard. I think my daughter would sit yeah. back there forever and watch those. Definitely. And monarchs are kind of the top one here in Southern California. Um, you know, you got two different classes of plants for those. You got their host plants, something that they're going to eat and then go into the larvae form from caterpillar. And then you got their nectar plants, something that when they are a butterfly, they're going to go ahead and get the nectar up. And for monarchs, the top two or the top plant and the only plant really is Asclepius. And you've got a couple varieties. You've got your uh, tropical uh, Asclepius here and you got your native milkweed as well. So you have options there. Um, you know, you want to plant a mix because it's kind of a bit more of a buffet. You don't just want to have one variety because that would be like going to a buffet that only serves chicken nuggets. Oh, no. You want to have a few other options. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you want hot dogs and pizza and all, all that stuff too. Exactly. And then, you know, you got other plants for butterflies like penstemon, kufia, um, budlia. And, and, you know, the cool thing about all these plants is that they all do their own part, but then they look pretty in other ways. And we have a company that we pair with called Musa Creek Nursery. They're a native plant grower, and they create a little sign for all their plants. And on the sign, it says when it blooms, oh, cool. they say whether it attracts like bees or butterflies as well. Um, because not too many people would think about a cactus actually attracting. Yeah, I was just thinking, I was like, wait a minute, Tiger, that's a cactus. There's not going to be much, uh, you know, that's going to want to fly to that. But when you show that it blooms and there's a little flower that can come from it and add a little color to your garden, that's nice. Yeah, and they do it at different times. So you want to pick things that are going to go in sequence. Some that are in the spring, some that are in the summer. Because as, as we get into the summer, that's when butterflies and birds are kind of lacking their natural sure food sources so we can supplement for them a little bit by having plants that go summer into fall um the other thing i wanted to mention for both the butterflies and the birds is a water source yes um a lot of people think oh i don't know i can't put a fountain in i, can, I don't have room for that or i don't want to be a, a buy a big expensive bird bath this is simply just a, a pot you know a ceramic pot mm -hmm. looks pretty nice and this is just a saucer oh there you, you can go. just simply put that on top Put it somewhere where it gets a little bit of water from maybe your sprinklers, and now you've got your water source for these oh, little critters. Go. And you're recycling the water. You're not necessarily even adding new water to that. Yeah, and, you know, the thing that you got to be careful with with some of these things is cats or predators. So you want to make sure you put them in spots where they're not going to be in the bushes where a cat can attack a bird. Or, or a predator can get a bird. Right. But you want to put them in areas that, you know, you give the birds an opportunity to see any kind of trouble coming their way so that way they can escape if they need be. Tiger, we got to get running here in a little bit, but I just had a question on the birds. Uh, what kind of birds are we talking about? Um, I'm not necessarily a big fan of crows showing up in my backyard. Uh, so <laughs> so what, what, what are we looking Bean, at? Yeah, being specific is really smart. Do your research on what birds are in your neighborhood. Yeah. Finches, orioles little birds like that only attract those by planting plants that are specific to those varieties gotcha okay so you can actually break it down like that that's uh, that's amazing and uh where can people yeah, yeah. if they want to if they want to uh, learn more about how to attract our butterflies and our birds and then also get the plants okay stop by here mission hills nursery we'd love to help you i'm in the trees because this is another thing that you want to be able to incorporate in the yard is a plant a tree you'll attract a lot of critters that way as well there you go i like that and uh the mosquitoes too that's the natural way <laughs> to eat those little critters up right <laughs> yeah you'll see them flying around <laughs> yeah it's that time of year tiger always appreciate your insight your advice your suggestions and then just the beauty that you bring on to our show here uh, with all the colors and everything it's that time of year where we get to see those pops in our garden yeah definitely awesome thanks again for your time tiger